Hi everybody, big guy here. Welcome to Mike's Garage. Today I want to take a few minutes and go over the Filter Queen vacuum cleaner. I know we've done a couple of videos on that before. I've got a couple of requests about doing some simple maintenance items on it. And today I'm going to show you how to take it apart. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace what they call the silencing filter. That's the filter that goes around the top behind the louvers. Okay, so let's get started. All you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver and the new part. Let's go to the shop. Okay, we're here at the shop. We have the filter queen. We have the uh, filter. And we're going to take the cord out of the way and set that aside. Now that is attached to the top, so it is going to be on the table here with us. Now we're going to undo the clamps on either side. Undo those from the bottom and then pull the tops away. Lift out the top. Okay, now we're not going to need the dirt container. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll move that off to the side. I see I'm just going to put it on the floor right here next to us. Keep the workbench as clear as we can. All right. Now, the other thing I want to remove is on the bottom. They have what they call a cone support. Remove that knob, turn the knob, and uh, undo the screw. And take that out of the way. And we won't need that, so we're going to put that off to the side. Put it right down on top of the dirt bucket. Now, I like to work with a flat surface, so that's why we did all that. Now we have it flat, and we can work with it. Next, we're going to remove that cap on the top. That's the exhaust cap. That's the exhaust port you see there. And there's three screws in there. Now, they look like they're a triangle, but they're not an exact distance apart from each other. So you have to be careful that you pay attention to how you're going to put it back together. Now, these are regular screws. Uh, the newer versions all have Phillips head screws. So we're going to take out these three screws. Uh, just give me a minute here. Now, these screws go into a plastic housing that houses the motor. So when you put it back together, you don't want to make it too tight because it will strip the screws. And you can see they're just a really short self-tapping screw. You don't want to uh, over-tighten them. You make them tight, not real tight, more than snug. But that's all you need. It does hold the, uh, the top on so you can lift the whole machine up with the handle. Now we're going to take out that little basket. That's what holds everything in place. There's also the serial number and the model number is on that plate that's in there too. So we're just going to set that aside. Now you're going to remove this rubber cap on the on off switch. Just pull that off, work it back and forth, pull it off. Set that aside. We're going to put that back on when we're done. Now we're going to lift and make sure that that tab goes through the housing. So, oh, there we go. Got that off. And you can see this is a very simple version. It's a one speed motor. There's not too much inside to deal with. Uh, and we're going to take out the cardboard support that holds the silencing filter, the silencing filter up against the louvers. So we're going to take that out. What you want to look for is there's a short tab on one side and a wide tab on the other. We're going to undo it with a short tab and then pull that out, get that out of the way. And that, that the only purpose of that is to hold this in place. And then we take out the silencing filter and you can see how dirty that is. That's all carbon from the motor. As the motor runs after years and years, um, two, three, five years, this thing should be changed. Uh, this one we're going to put in is ripped, but that's okay. Just make sure it's pushed together. It's a bigger circle than you're going to put this into. So you just insert that into the place. Make sure it covers all the louvers. And we're going to put the cardboard insert back in. Uh, we're going to do the wide side first. Put that under that tab like that. And then bend it a little bit and put it under the tab on the other side. Now be careful, those tabs are able to have a little bit of a sharp edge on them. You don't want to cut yourself when you're doing that. So uh, that's pretty much how you got to do it. This is all there is to it. 
You can wipe it out on the inside if you think it's dirty. Get a little Lysol wipe or a Clorox wipe or something, wipe that out. Now we're going to line everything back up and put it back together. You got to watch that on off tab. Like I said, we're going to have to line that up to make sure that goes through the opening. And um, from there, we just put the screws back in the top. So we're going to line up that opening and the um, switch. Let's see, we go around this way and uh, push that through a little bit, then pop that down and there it goes. Okay, we're all set. All right, so that's all lined up. Uh, we're going to put that rubber cap, where is it? Yep, we're going to put that rubber cap back on. You do have to work it on there a little bit. It has two knobs on the bottom that pop through those two holes, plus the sides slide on. So it can be give you a little bit of a problem once in a while, but I'm sure you can manage it. Um, just snap it on. Now you want to work this switch to make sure it uh, clicks up and down, turns it on and off, and it's not binding at all. Then we're going to put that uh, cup back in the top line up the holes make sure it's all lined up correctly you're going to put the screws back in which i'm not going to take time to do that now you can do that on your own that's all there is to it again make sure the on off switch clicks properly it's not binding and when you get the screws in you put the cap on then reassemble everything and you're done that's all there is to it so what do you think everybody was that helpful was it Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm afraid that's going to be our last video. Oh, come on. Okay, okay, we'll make more videos, okay? We're going to make another video, I promise. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, give me a call. The 800 number is on the screen there somewhere. Uh, we tried to put it up a couple different places. We have all the parts you need. We mail all over the country. Uh, we answer questions for free. We have schematics if you need them, if you're a do-it-yourselfer. If not, you can mail it in. We'll fix it here. We'll call you, and we will pay to mail it back. So it's a pretty good deal. Uh, give me a call. Thanks for watching Mike, Mike's Garage. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that little bell so you get notified when we put up another video. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.